Hello, friends and family. While we here at Wowie's workshop, I'm just gonna slip you in here into the old tripod. And I am in the uh, Hall of Creation, Shin Shin, for people that have been here before. If not, welcome to the workshop. And I'm going to be talking about this piece today. So, long story short, I'll explain it through the dreaded talk through as we go through this, but this piece has evolved into a very, very special piece, this wood spirit, and I will explain it all. It was done for the challenge. I am an admin for the Carbon Fusion World Wood Carvers group original on Facebook, and we had a challenge, and it was for a green person with a friend, and that's how it all started. But as I'll explain, it uh, turned into quite, quite the project, a family thing, a family, a legacy display for piece. So I thank you for being here. I'm going to share and hopefully it'll inspire. The footage isn't the best. I didn't originally want to uh, share this one. It was a secret kind of thing, but I did take quick little passes and uh, post them as shorts and reels for teaser, teaser, pleasers. And so the most of the footage is that kind of footage and it's not the best, but if I can inspire somebody, that's the reason we've made this channel is if we can inspire somebody, it is to share our artwork and show the world, but it's uh, all about inspiring and showing people that you can do it too. So, before I ramble more, may I share our green lady and friend. Much love. And almost every wood carving starts the same. Me doing my picky picky with my trusty butter knife. To get the bark off I use it every time I don't know where I got this knife folks but it has this cool grip and it's got this pokey end and serrated edge and I just love it for picking off the bark I use it I use it every time I'm not lying I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in to Wowie's workshop and now on to the art
And we are going to have a brief interruption because I lost a little bit of the footage. You know, the footage I never intended on taking in the first place footage. So the fact that I lost it isn't really a much of a surprise, is it? So I'm going to take this time here quickly to just go over the tools that I'm using and what I've been using so far and uh, the, how I cut in the eyes quickly. And I'll show you the bits and the burrs too quick. And we folks are going to call this the spread look at them all so so far with the bulk and cutting out the eyes and the brow line and the nose and taking all that material out i've been using these bigger guys this is a cut saw flame this here is a fordham typhoon flame and then so when i did the eyebrows the little leaves for her eyebrows and other details, what I do, and this is kind of like a sticks and stones thing, I draw on what I want, and then I take these little carbide cutters, and I go around the pencil. And then after I've got everything cut out, so if I say I'm cutting in the eyes, or I'm cutting in this, or cutting in that, usually it's because I'm using all that little carbide cutters. And then after you've cut them in, you go back, uh, and then you remove all of your cut lines, with those bad boys and those are the tapers these are cuts all this is original and this is fine and yes my my burrs and bits need to be cleaned everything needs to be cleaned in this creation station so so far that's what i've been using folks i am running a couple of different dremels a dremel 3000 sorry that's just bunk light here we go and all of my Hand pieces are there in the hanger that I made. Got a couple uh Peter Blair mandrels. I got a cut a new cuts all flame on that bad boy ready to go. And I have some sanders and I have a Fordham. I also have a RAM micro carver. And that's for the finer details. Alrighty. Let's get back, and I apologize about that, folks. Let's get back to the process here. Hello guys, and if you're listening to this one, it's, I've replaced, I just spent five minutes rambling about all sorts of stuff, but this will be the uh, short version. This is where I am. I originally kept this project secret and thinking, not thinking very smartly, like I was like, no, I'm going to take, I'm going to keep it secret. So 
I'm not going to take footage of it. And then I thought at the end, I was like, I, after I reveal it, if I would have taken footage all the way, I could have made a really, really wicked video of it. Like, what am I thinking? You know, just because I take the footage doesn't mean it has to be revealed that day. <laughs> oh, well. Anyways, I'm going to start with wood grains. Different wood stains in wood grains. In front, you know, a lighter one, a light, light cherry one. And then if I have to, I will be going to an early American. So, I want some separation between everything in here because it all looks too much of a of that light light wood grain so that's what we're doing Let's see how this goes And here we are folks, now it's time to uh, figure out the hanging hardware. And this time we chose a French cleat, also known as a Z-clamp. They're for uh, hanging up uh, heavier pieces. And this piece being a solid thick burl, it does have some weight to it. So we used the Z-clamp. And we also used some pads that you're gonna see in a moment here um, to help level it out. And it, it's nice little pads that won't, it does, you're not gonna scratch up the wall when you're trying to hang your piece. And with our trusty razor tip, we burnt the, our signature into it. And I decided to go into the heart of the burl there, as you can see, and uh, sign there, burn a heart in there for our mom. We love you so dearly, mom. Thanks for listening.
And here we are, folks, with the grand reveal. That's after three layers of matte Rust-Oleum spray. We wanted to give it a tiny, tiny bit of a sheen, but just like what nature has itself when you see a vine or a leaf out there, just a touch, so we used the matte. And then we hand painted it on her little leaf eyebrows. I wanted to leave the eyes on this one. I didn't want them to be shiny. I didn't want it to go tacky or, or, or look cheesy. I wanted to leave the eyes in natural wood tones and just give, like I say, the hair and the greenery just a tiny, tiny bit of a pop. And this is her. This is her. Welcome, old wise one. It's been a long trip. Now, time for the friend. And here, folks, is the pocket chickadee that our opa carved. A beautiful, beautiful little keepsake. And he gave that to our mum. But it's never had a worthy home, meaning an, a worthy place to sit and display. It's always needed a special, special place made. So we're using this carving opportunity to do just that, because it deserves it. Here we go. So here we are, folks, flashing the dubs, flashing the dubs for Wowie's workshop. And with the gracious help of my brother and his guidance, we're going to give this nest a good go. Time to do it to it. Now, first, I'm just going to make a loose kind of spiral and make a type of little bowl. After I make the spiral, I will tag it and then kind of go in vertical little spots to reinforce the nest. If that makes any sense. I'm so lucky to have my bro. He's a master at copper. And uh, lately he's been doing more photography work. But anytime he picks up that metal, he's a magician. And we are so close. So close to being done here. So I'm going to kick it into high gear and take this project on home. Here we go. Now here, folks, is where, uh, and I apologize, but I get a little bit mushy because I got to say some things about my brother's art. His art is so special to me. Number one being how unique it is. It's always been his special way of conveying himself, inspired by nature. His first lantern creations were based off of the old, the big ball, 
birds' nests in the trees up in northern Alberta. I don't even know which birds make them. Ravens, but they're big black balls. And he did that. He made them with scrap copper. And from there, his amazing lanterns came to be. But the randomness... And the chaos becoming beauty, it just screams nature. And it's it's why I just, I just love it and I support him. And he taught me a little bit of it, of what he can do. He taught me and I'm forever grateful to you, Darren. I couldn't do this without you. This is your stamp on every creation. That's you. Love you, brother. And thanks for listening, folks. And on that note, Two Brothers, One Vision presents Safe and Sound.